Renault versus Toro Rosso heading to the penultimate lap. Nearly onto the final lap. Bullet Boy, he's contending for the lead. He's going to try around the outside of Stowe. Jay Ghost doing everything he can to defend the position with all his might. But Bullet Boy, he's proving so quick at the moment. Tries up the inside. But Jay Ghost quick enough around the outside. Incredible action. We told you that Silverstone always provides a close finish. This is no exception. Two temps onto the final lap. Hello and a very warm welcome to round 10 of the late breaking sprint championship. Just three races to go in this title fight. My name is Ben Hocking. My name is Samuel Sage. And we've well, got third. Weird. I'm sorry everyone, <laughs> I was expecting Harry E to chime in, but of course he's not here today. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's just the two of us you'll have to cope with. Uh, yeah, we're, we've got 13 in the lobby today here in Britain with a chance of Caesar winning the championship today. We'll keep you updated with the ins and outs as to whether he does or not, but at the moment, there is a 37 point difference between him and Bullet Boy in second. If that becomes 50 points or more by the end of the day, Caesar will be champion with two races to go. Blimey, I mean, considering it came down to the last race of the season in season two, he has managed to somehow claw back an epic comeback across this season. Remember at the start of the season, he was pretty much at the back of the pack after the first couple of races. Yeah, absolutely. He uh, scored just one point from the first two races. That was thanks to a pole position. Uh, but since then, he has finished first and second at every single race we've had this season, which is remarkable consistency, remarkable pace. And no one has quite been able to match it thus far. But, of course, this is the late-breaking online racing league. Anything can happen. Anything usually does happen. And we thought he had it wrapped up last season. Uh, and that didn't quite work out for him. He did end up winning the championship, obviously. But he, he went the long way around that. Yeah, it was all coming down to penalties as a... Uh appears to be tradition now in the late breaking online racing league but as Ben said and to quote Ellie Golding anything can happen thank you for that beautiful reference uh, <laughs> and Purple Petrol has joined the session he was having problems beforehand getting into the session we were worried after attending 50 consecutive races that race 51 would be his downfall but not to be he will be here for the race good to see that is great to see. Something very interesting, of course, about Silverstone is that when you put blue on your tyres, they become hard. They do, and they don't become wet tyres as they are so close to the wet tyre. But that is the hard tyre you see on a couple of the guys out there. Toxic Tomato, uh, Mainer, Bullet Boy, considering the same in the pits. The three tyre compounds, the soft, the mediums and the hards. Uh, Theoretically, everyone will qualify on the soft tyre and then do a one-stop, but there is a little bit of chatter that there's rain in the air, whether that's at the end of qualifying or during the race, it remains to be seen. On board with Toxic Tomato now, I believe he's the first driver who will yeah, cross is. the line uh, in that gorgeous Ferrari in the blazing sunshine as he goes down towards Stowe. Uh, and then he's just got a couple more corners to go before this is all over, looking at Vale, uh, and then into the last two corners, that being club and we'll have to see what time he records he does have the fastest time trial bear in mind with a 125.9 uh, that one was invalidated though and on the hard tire it's unlikely he was going to get anywhere close to that Mainer is the first guy across the line then a 130 dead Nova Vess on the medium tire goes two cents quick uh, two seconds quicker I'm keeping my eyes over on the uh the infamous Mr. Psycho saying at the moment, the man that, if you haven't seen it, did rather well in our classic 50th uh, celebratory race around Monza in some classic cars. He's on the medium tyre in that silver Mercedes. Now, he was in the red Ferrari in the classic race, odd to see. But uh, here he comes now, through Vale and Club, this uh, brilliant final section of corners. Really difficult to navigate. All about traction and aerodynamic performance. He comes around the final corner, across the line, and it's a current pole position time on a 127.6, five tenths faster than Nova Vess. It's time to bring up this stat again, but it keeps rolling over week on week. 
we have had nine races this season and nine different drivers on pole position. If Psycho saying where to get pole, unbelievably he's not one of them. If he can get pole today, we'll have ten different pole sitters. That's ridiculous and just shows the I consistency mean, of the league. Do you do you get that literally anywhere else in the world? I'm not sure I've ever heard nine different pole sitters. Absolutely. On board with Cards right now, and of course we've seen him get pole positions in the league before, uh, but none this season so far since his return. He pulls into the pits uh, along with a few other drivers. Toxic Tomatoes going for one more because his second lap was also invalidated, so uh, he needs to get a, a lap where he doesn't get all four wheels off the circuit. Someone who is surprisingly in contention for a few things, and it's kind of come out of nowhere, really, is Orcters. Uh, car number 13, in the Mercedes, oh, 73, sorry, in the Mercedes. He's on the medium tyre. He's on a lap right now. Um, he's been doing rather well recently. So a lot of pace in the Classic race and has done in a few races beforehand. Yeah, Orcters, when he's on, he's really on and he can perform. Uh, Jay Ghost is about to cross the line, but it's only a 1.32.2, not a representative lap time yet for him. Um, yeah, he when he's on pace, he, he is really there. And Hockenheim was a prime example of that, as was the classic race at Monza. And it's a question of whether today is going to be one of those days again. When he's on it, he is up there with the best. Uh, and now he's just got the very difficult braking zone, such heavy deceleration into Vale. Uh, and then the tight twisty last two corners including club and then it will be across the line and he goes fastest to 126.5 three temps up on Caesar. it's good to see the uh, the old challenger back at it again of course these three that you see in one two and three were the three that were fighting for the title in season two and they're up there again making a return this week is Gilzo after his uh, his journey across America I'm probably making that seem more dramatic than what it was. But yeah, he's, he's back from America in the in the good old heart of Ireland. And he's going to be racing well, here. I heard that he rode across America on the back of a coyote. So it, I think it was quite dramatic. I heard similar rumours. <laughs> anyway, through Vail. Sorry, now, I'm just going to course... say he probably binned it. You know. <laughs> yes, straight into a uh, an Armco barrier. Across the line he goes. It's invalidated, but that would have put him into third place had it stood. Toxic Tomato on those medium tyres. Is he going to be able to put in a lap that is around those top few that are on the softs? The best medium time out there so far is Psycho saying in P4. I was going to say P3, but Gilzo has just slotted into that position. So Toxic Tomato, he's just got two corners left to go. What's this going to be? It's a 126.8, so he does go fastest of the mediums on board with Maynard. The Sauber's not faring too well at the moment. They have the two slowest times out there. The only guys in the 130s. Uh, on these medium tyres, Maynard will be hoping for something just a little bit better. He's been going for it on this lap, so it'll be interesting to see where he stacks up in comparison to the rest of the competition. Uh, and he goes into 8th place, marginally quicker than Lopez. Uh, it's crazy. And Bullet Boy, I think he becomes the first ever driver to be disqualified in qualifying. Well, funny enough, Ben, I, I was on board with Bullet Boy because I thought, hasn't set a lap yet, usually very quick. He was just sat down... Uh just down the back straight after Maggots and Beckett. So he was just sat there with his DRS open on the hard tyre, not doing anything. Um, huh. Maybe he just doesn't fancy it today. Well, we've spoken about how he needs a good performance in order to keep up with Caesar and at least extend the title fight one week longer. Uh, but he's going to have to come from P13 if he wants to, uh, if he wants to keep that going. Uh, and with Caesar set to start P2 at the moment. Psycho saying he's gone for another lap and he is two and a half temps up on his time. So he will be somewhere in that mix between P2 and P5. It's just about where. Because there is just half a temp between those spots at the moment. And he's gone into the pits. He's done the same thing as Toxic Tomato has done. Yeah, everyone just finishing their outlaps now. It's only Mayner uh, that has timed it slightly differently. So he won't be on track in the final uh, final seconds of this session and we're on board with Nova Vess who had just had an invalidated lap time but he's going for it again and he is up on his time once more as he goes through the tricky Maggots and Beckett section uh, and then we should get another indication and yes he's about a second up on his time so expect to see him somewhere around Mr. Psycho's in P6. Hello Gilzo! He goes into pole position. 
I imagine he crossed the line with a massive yeehaw. DJ Marshall does improve, and I think he's just in time to start another lap, but currently still sits absolutely last. No less into the pits, he won't improve. Lopez is also in the pits, so he can't do anything about it. Same as Mega and Hapuli Boy, but keep your eyes peeled for the likes of Alters, Khan, Psycho Saint, Toxic Tomato, Caesar. They are all out on laps. Uh, Caesar is up by three <laughs> temps, though, so this could be in and around where he needs to be in order to get pole position away from Gilzo. Can he steal it away from him at the last? He does! A 126-3! Caesar! Provisional pole for him, but there's still guys out there. Gilzo's still going for it, as is Jay Ghost, as is Toxic Tomato. It's going to come down to the death. I can tell you now that Gilzo through the middle sector is, is, is half a sec, half a tenth rather, up on his best time. So he's practically equal to Caesar in the, in the first two sectors. If he can nail the final sector, he could snatch away pole. He runs wide there going through, uh, going through Stowe. So that could be game over. It could be invalidated, but he's still pushing. He's still pushing. He's coming around club in the final corner now. Is it going to be an improvement? Oh. No, no, he's less than half a tenth away from pole. Jay and Ghost oh, is Jay up Ghost on his time as well. Jay Ghost is up. Is he up by enough? No, he improves, but he's within a tenth. Toxic Tomato? No, he no. stays P4, so it is Caesar who claims pole position here. Leading the field away today is the Red Bull of Mercurial Caesar. Starting on pole position, he's got a great chance of claiming the championship today. If he wins the race and Bullet Boy is not on the podium, he has it all wrapped up. Starting on the front row with him is Gilzo in a great position on his return to the league. Then comes Jay Ghost in P3 and Toxic Tomato is P4, the lead of the guys on the medium tyre. Fifth place is then Hapuli Boy. Sixth place, keeping up that streak of being in the top three rows all season in qualifying is Mr. Psycho saying. Maynard starts in P7, again on the medium tyres, so watch out for his alternate strategy. Carnes is going to start in P8. Orptas then starts in P9. Lopez rounds out the top 10 on the medium tyre. And there's a tyre choice for everyone outside the top 10. That includes DJ Marshall in P11. He's gone for the softs. P12, no invest, the only guy on the hard tyre. P13, Bullet Boy, he's got a lot of ground to make up today. Johannes is going to start from P14. Pretend that's a Force India rather than a Red Bull. And the Force India of Purple Petrol, pretend that that one isn't. And pretend that's a McLaren instead. But he starts from last place. And of course, the sun might be glaring down now, but in typical Silverstone fashion, we might see some rain towards the end of this race. If we do, watch out everyone. We're building for five red lights here at the British Grand Prix. Watch out for Gilzo on the left-hand side. He's going to try and attack Mercurial Caesar into the first corner. Such a difficult first corner to get right. You've got Jay Ghost and Toxic Tomato starting in P3 and P4. Just what is going to happen here into turn one? Will Gilzo try anything? No, Caesar comes through first, and it's actually Jacos who's challenging Gilzo, and he gets him. He gets him for P2. So now Gilzo down to P3, and he's going to go down to P4 because the Pooley Boys had a fantastic start to this race, and he's going to have the inside line as they go through this twisty first sector. Caesar's got a bit of, a, bit of an advantage, but Jacos can be happy with his start as well. Gilzo goes from bad to worse down to P4, and Toxic Tomato, he might be looking to get all over the back of him too. Psycho saying has held position in P6. We've got battling further on back down the field. It looks as if they've all gone through pretty cleanly. And Gilzo has managed to get back up the inside of a Pooley boy. So he takes P3 straight back. Sam, hectic start. Hectic start, as we said, and there was some carnage, Ben. You, you were focusing on that top five, understandably so. There was a front wing that flew across turn one, and DJ Marshall skipped over three corners at the start of this race, so he's already got a three-second time penalty. It's not a good day out for the Sauber driver. On the other hand, Bullet Boy, the biggest gamer on the grid, he's up four places and overtook Khan swooping round through Brooklyn, I think it was. Uh, a great move there from the Toros driver. He's now on the back of Mayner, who is also looking out to get to the grid. 7th uh, and 6th sit the Mercedes, a line of steel. And they're looking to attack it. You guessed it. The Mercedes, no, the Ferrari rather, of Toxic Tomato. Mercedes v Ferrari, who would have guessed it? Who would have guessed it indeed? Jay Ghost is keeping Caesar honest out front and he's keeping him within a few temps. If he can do that for a little bit longer. Oh, DJ Marshall's uh, round! Oh dear, DJ Marshall involved in an incident and Lopez is going to go into the pits on the first lap and Nova Vess has got a five second stop go because he's sped in the pit lane too so not a good start for any of those three drivers uh, Bullet Boy going for a dive Oh and there's contact between Bullet Boy and Mayner 
Bullet Boy trying to get the move done on Mayna, storming up the inside, but Mayna was having absolutely none of it. As Bullet Boy now sweeps around the outside, that might be a done deal. No, they're still side by side. This is fantastic action between the two of them. Oh, so nearly contact through Cops, but Bullet Boy has got through clean. He's got the position. As you say, Hapuli Boy is keeping Gilzo in check. And of course, Psycho saying he's looking dangerous in P5 too. Good start from Orc as his teammate up into P6. So uh, yeah. uh, that's Toxic Tomato into the pits. So surely he was involved in an incident and there was Mercurial Caesar's round. Caesar's round. Well, I don't know what's happened there, but he's also wearing 13 on his car. It's not a great day for those with 13 on the car, but he has dropped from first to 10th. Jago's takes a lead. Surely that's chances of a title winning race over for Caesar. I would love to tell you what happened, ladies and gents, but I did not see it. Caesar, who was in the lead by a few temps, maybe there was contact between him and Jay Ghost, I do not know. Uh, but whatever the reason, Caesar is down to P10 after starting on pole position, and Jay Ghost assumes the lead. Race, the top four, all on the soft compound. Uh, Caesar must have picked up front wing damage after his incident. Maybe he just lost it going into turn one. That is easy enough to do. Um, and we'll have to see what kind of tyre he puts on here. Uh, and he's going for the medium tyre. That's interesting. That tells us that rain might be sooner than we think. Because the medium tyre can't go to the end from only lap four. Not around the Silverstone, which is pretty much the hardest tyre wearing track on the whole calendar. Johannes trying a very ambitious move around the outside of Khan's not quite able to make it stick. Again, he's going to the outside, uh, but once again, not able to make it happen. But he'll get a good run as they go down to Cops. Yeah, meanwhile, Jagos is consolidating his lead, keeping him over a second. Johannes, Johannes. is going to try the move on Khan's now. He couldn't quite get it done earlier in the lap. Will it be here that he gets the move done? No, Khan sweeps around the outside. He looks very comfortable going around that corner, does Khan's. He, uh... Looks as though he's got great traction on those soft tyres at the moment. Yeah, but Johannes continues to harry him. Um, and where his next opportunity will be is anyone's guess. It's not going to be turn one, but it could well be into the next corner. Is he going to try something up the inside? He does. He throws the corner into the, his car into the corner. Carnes is going to hold it there. This is great defending from Carnes. And this is... Oh, and he... Yeah, he's forced him out wide there, Carnes. Bullet Boy Bullet is going to make though. a move on yep. Psycho Sane. And there's not going to be much he can do to defend the position there. Bullet Boy storms past another driver from P13. He's now up to P4. A Pooley Boy picks up a time penalty. So that technically puts Bullet Boy in front of a Pooley Boy as well. So many boys, but are there any men? I think Jay Ghost would, uh, would argue that he's driving like a man at the moment. Man on a mission at least. 1.3 clear of Gilzo who already has a time penalty. Uh, Bullet Boy gets the fastest lap of the race. Only six laps in. There's still time for someone to take that away from him. But at the moment at least, that's a point going his way. Johannes is the latest to pick up a three second time penalty. Bullet Boy is still looking composed on those medium tyres. Of course, he is the challenger currently to Caesar. As you said, 38 point gap currently. But he looks like he's on a mission to try and take the victory. He pulls to the inside of a Pooley Boy. And the amount of speed that he's got over the Williams car. You wouldn't feel too strange saying that in real life. And uh, the Toro Rosso then up 10 places in 6 laps. What an insane run through the field this has been from Bullet Boy. And you fear that it's not going to stop now. Uh, Caesar picks up his first time penalty of the day down in P13. Of course, we might see a slight change of strategy as we have heard a pitter patter of rain is in the distance. This is Britain, of course, and DJ Marshall might be doing exactly that. He's in the pit now. Uh, I don't know what tire he's going on to. He's currently going to the hard tire. So you could go to the end on the hard tire here. Maybe he's trying to see how long he can go before the rain kicks in. Maybe it won't ever get wet enough that we're going to see a changeover. Yeah, I think Jay Ghost will just be hoping out in the lead that it's a, it's a seamless transition if it does happen and no one catches him by surprise by pitting in a lap earlier or a lap later and that he gets the, uh, the crossover point spot on. Uh, he's got everything to lose at the moment in P1. Can he gain his first victory of the season? Psycho Sane is into Psycho the pits. Sane. 
Yeah, he's looking to do the undercut, I believe, on the cards in front. He was only a second or so behind the Battle of Hapuli Boy, Bullet Boy and Gilzo, so he wasn't far off the pace. If there's a little bit of traffic or an incident, he could definitely make a jump here, but Bullet Boy now much closer to Gilzo than Gilzo is J-Ghost. Psycho Saint's gone onto the medium tyres, which is another hint that we could see rain at the end of the race. Or that Psycho Saint is going on to a two-stop, one or the other. 18 laps to go. We are uh, we are clocking our way through this race. We're just hitting a third now. And still so much left to happen here. The tension of rain could cause a storm in the air. Or it could cause a storm in this championship. Because you never know. Caesar could pop up in the rain. He claims to absolutely love it. But Bullet Boy is the one taking full advantage of what's happening right now. Yeah, and he is within DRS range of Gilzo now. Another guy who's looking pretty good on the medium tyre is Mayna in P6. And don't forget about Johannes either in P7. He started right at the back of the grid. Uh, Hapuli Boy has come into the pits now. Uh, so perhaps noticing that Psycho Sane went into the pits. And Psycho Sane's actually come out right in the battle between him and Toxic Tomato. Toxic Tomato pit very early on onto the hard tyres. And Psycho Sane is giving him a little bit of issue uh, a few issues main has come into the pits that's a weird one yeah i'm one wondering and slightly worried for psycho saying i'm thinking that's gonna hold him up just enough that her pulley boy might be able to jump back past him i wouldn't be surprised at all uh we'll have to see where her pulley boy feeds back in will he be ahead of these two will he be behind them will he be in between them We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> the Pooley Boy onto the medium tyres. The same as Psycho Sane. So the strategy is the same. And Psycho Sane has not beat him out of the pit. So Pooley Boy comes out a few seconds clear. Here we go then. He's cracked it up to four. The DRS is open. He is getting on Gilzo like a blimmin' tornado through the Midwest. Down the inside he goes. And that is position down and dusty. He makes it look ridiculously easy. Into second place. Up 11 It'll be places. first place because Jay goes is into the pits. Wow, what a conquering of the field Bullet Boy has just achieved. 12 places, nine laps, done and dusted. Yeah, and we'll have to see if Jay goes and Gilzo and Orcters, he's in as well, whether they follow suit. I can see medium tires for Orcters and medium tires for Gilzo and medium tires for Jay Ghosts. I I fear as I feel as if a lot of these guys were going to the hard tires if they were going to the end. Yeah, I agree with you, Ben. It seems odd that they're only going to the mediums now, especially when a lot of them were kind of around the softs and mediums anyway. Um, the Pooley Boy actually could play himself into that fight. He's had a very clean couple of laps on those fresh tyres, and there's a lot of cars still in the pits. He's coming past oh. now. Let's see where he's going to pop out. Caesar and Mayna having a bit of a ding-dong of a battle here. Mayna on those fresh hard tyres. Caesar on six-lap old softs. Uh, so, yeah, Pooley Boy is 3.6 ahead of Gilzo. Jay Ghost was able to keep his uh, his net lead in P4. Uh, and Orp just two seconds behind the battle between Psycho Sane and Toxic Tomato. Interesting stuff. And Toxic Tomato's had a bit of a problem on the grass as he's exited the corner there. And Psycho Sane is going to say thank you very much and take the opportunity. Uh, Toxic Tomato is still right at the back of Psycho Sane after that error that he made. He has not let him go. Yeah, looking racing on those hard tyres, which is a bit of a shocking thing to say because these tyres are blimmin' awful. Yeah, he's making them work. Eight laps on those hard tyres and uh, maybe making that early pit stop isn't going to be too disastrous for him. Jay Ghosts, uh, importantly, he picks up his first penalty of the day. So all of that third, fourth and fifth have picked up a penalty now. It's really classic that we've got the drivers who started in P13 and P14 in P1 and P2 halfway through this race. Classic LB. DJ Marshall yeah. is keeping the pressure on Purple Petrol uh, on board with him now to see if he can get that move done. Meanwhile, we've got a few other developing battles throughout the field. Caesar in P9 is putting the pressure on Orcters in P8. Lopez, who's had a pretty quiet race, actually. He picks up a three-second time penalty. Uh, we've got Lopez. Yellows. Yeah, Lopez fell right off the track on Maggots and Beckett. He drove straight over the grass in the middle. Jago's sets the new fastest lap of 129.7. He'll get the extra point as it stands, but a real tough race for Lopez as well. Um, Carl slips past all the way down to 12th now for Lopez. Yeah, it seems unlikely that he will get uh, a podium like he did here in Season 1. DJ Marshall going to try and send it up the inside of Purple Petrol. Is Purple Petrol going to be able to hold on? Not quite. 
uh, unless he does try to retake the position up the inside. DJ Marshall later on the brakes, so he does keep that position. P13 is his. Change. Psycho saying probably the best driver on the grid in terms of his discipline and keeping it clean and not getting penalties. But he might be overtaken here by Toxic Tomato, who's all over him, and he's going to try and move up the inside as he goes into Brooklyn's, and it's worked out well. He'll try and keep it as they now go through Luffield and Woodcott. And yes, Toxic Tomato, after losing that position a number of laps ago, retakes the position here. Ferrari Viva Sega. Bullet Boy in the pit. Yeah, Bullet Boy is in. I'm going to stay on board with him to see what tyre he decides to strap on. If he goes soft, he possibly could take them to the end. But 12 laps, 11 laps ish on the soft tyre is never going to be easy for any driver around here. So I think if it's soft. Oh, oh no! His pit crew are out and he's stuck! Oh no! And Psycho Zane's going to get past Toxie Tomato again for P6. The weirdest thing has happened. Bullet Boy has just drifted through his pit box without any pit crew. And I think he's got new tyres on. He, he does have brand new soft tyres on. Uh, he's going to relinquish P2, P3. He's going to come out in P4 just behind Gilzo. But on fresh tyres, Gilzo's going to have a hard job keeping him behind him. And Gilzo now is going to have a hard job defending with Bullet Boy. And he's, oh, and he's gone to his uh, Mansell style. And he goes to the inside after the hangar straight and gets it done. That, that was delightfully thrilling from Bullet Boy. And Alters is going to get game. Caesar. Well, that is a turnout for the books. Look at Alters go. He's got around the outside. I think he's touched Caesar's front wing a little bit there. But I don't think any damage has been caused. Uh, but Alters up to eighth now. Yeah, we've got at least, I think, about five battles at the minute, which are separated by under a second. Everything has come alive here at Silverstone. Brilliant to see Intoxic Tomato pressurising Psycho Sane all the way. And he's going to go to the outside here. This would be a bold move. Psycho Sane defends it well. Uh, these two, what a cracking battle. They're putting on a show. They are all a little bit of disconnect issue there for Psycho Sane. I think that's allowed Toxic Tomato to really get on the back of the Sega. His DRS is now open. He's going down the outside. He's currently in front. Let's see if Psycho Sane can break late to keep himself in it. No, he cannot. And Toxic Tomato snatches P6 away from the Mercedes driver. As does Caesar P8 on Orcters. So those two battles have really emerged here and have provided the, the entertainment in this race. Fascinating to watch. And Bullet Boy is now only four attempts away from Jay Ghost. The pace that he has demonstrated today. We know how quick Jay Ghost is. But Bullet Boy is on an absolute rampage. And I don't think Jay Ghost is going to be able to stop him. This would be one of the most remarkable victories in late breaking history if he pulls it off. He's right behind Jay Ghost now. Got to keep his front wing intact. That's the most important thing. And Jay Ghost get on, gets on the grass which affects his run twice. Gets on the grass on the inside, then the outside. Bullet Boy goes to the outside. Can Jay Ghost stick it in on the inside? Will he try to do so? No, he's going to concede the position. Will now a move be made into Vale? No, Bullet Boy able to keep P1. So he does have P1 outright. And Tomasi Tomato and Psycho Sane are still right next to each other. Fascinating look, look right behind them on the track. Caesar and Orcters are also right next to them. These three are now separated by a second. Four of them, sorry. Separated by a second. Could this... Could these two two-person battles become one big four-person battle? That would be very entertaining to watch. Toxic Tomato, he's doing a fantastic job on those hard tyres. 15 laps, and to be fair, Caesar has gone a long way on those medium tyres now as well. Psycho Zane and Toxic Tomato go into the corner. And it's Psycho Zane who just has the advantage, but only just. Caesar is definitely now involved. The Hawks is only three tenths behind him as well. This battle has definitely become a four-way fight between the three biggest cars in Formula 1, all over fifth place. Jagos is also not letting Bullet Boy get anywhere. Only seven tenths to separate the leaders. Yeah, there's currently about one second between P5 and P8. Absolutely brilliant. And it's Psycho Sane who's going to have to do the defending. The only one of the four who will not have DRS as they go down the hangar straight. We've seen P5 and P6 change hands multiple times already. Will another one be added to the tally? He's going to go around the outside. Toxic Tomato. Such a bold move. And Psycho Sane 
Oh, and he's going to file in behind him. Is he going to try and move up the inside thereafter? No, Toxie Tomato able to hold the position. In that melee, Bullet Boy, a three-second time penalty. So he is now level in terms of penalties with all of those behind him. Psycho Sane, the only one of the top seven who doesn't have one. Caesar and Psycho Sane, we've seen it so many times. And it's Caesar who gets the upper hand on this latest duel. He goes into P6 and Psycho Sane will have to turn his attention to his teammate right behind him. Yeah, it looks as though those tyres might be cooked because he's suddenly struggling for a lot of corners. Toxic Tomato is sitting pretty up front of these four, and Orchis is now the one hounding his team. Oh, as Psycho saying, gets a lot of wheel spin off the curbing and nearly runs it into the grass. Orchis tries to go around the outside of Magnus and Beckett's. I mean, talk about being ballsy because that man's clearly got big ones. Interesting. Now, I thought Bullet Boy might just be coast into the distance, but Jagos has kept him right there. So penalties are going to play a factor at the end of this race if I even pick up another one. Carnes picks up his uh, six seconds worth of penalties now for him. Caesar is also hounding Toxic Tomato. He's not letting him get anywhere. Caesar realises that there is a championship on the line, and should he do well enough, it can easily be won next race. Yeah, absolutely. We are in Japan next week for anyone wondering. And then the final race of the season takes place in Brazil. Caesar picks up another penalty. So he's the only one of that group with six seconds worth. Just want to give a heads up to those who haven't been with us for too long. Every single season so far has gone down to the final race. We have never had a, uh, a championship decided outside of the final race. And currently... If it continues to be the way it's going to be, it could happen again, which I believe, Ben, correct me if I'm wrong, is Brazil. Yeah, Brazil, the final race of the season this year. We've seen plenty of epic finales at Brazil in real life. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to extend enough to get to that, but Bullet Boy is doing a fantastic job in the lead here. Uh, and Caesar, we don't know where he's going to finish this race. And J Ghost is all over the back of Bullet Boy. Uh, both of them, I think, getting involved with the grass once more. They are pushing the limits Orcters. of this Silverstone circuit. Two taps oh. between the lead at the moment, and Orcters challenging Psycho Sane for P7. That four person battle carries on into lap 21. Bullet Boy is receiving a lot of pressure from Jay Ghost now. Are those soft tyres good enough to get him to the end? Jay Ghost, after conceding the lead a couple of laps ago, he storms back into the lead here. You hear the crowd screaming through that corner, of course. What an experience it must be. Jay Ghost snatching back the lead. The old giant of LB is back at it again. He is at the front challenging the new boy, the bullet boy. But of course, that battle might be done for now. But Mayner is one and a half seconds away from this epic four-man battle that is still raging on. Three tenths separating each driver. Incredible scenes. Incredible scenes indeed. Uh, Totsi Tomato's got 18 laps on those hard tyres. Fair play to him. I know that they are not the best tyre, but he's able to make it work. And Caesar, 17 lap old medium tyres. They've got to be roaring away too. How he's able to stay in contention, that's admirable. Psycho say runs very wide going through turn one. That can open the door for Orcs as he looks to the inside. Will he dive for it? No, he keeps it clean. They are teammates after all, like Hamilton and Bottas. They wouldn't want to upset each other now. No. Bullet Boy, still only five tenths away from Jay Ghost. So after retaking the lead, Jay Ghost has not been able to scamper away. And Bullet Boy is going to try and make those soft tyres work. Because, of course, whilst those soft tyres are going to be getting weaker and weaker, those medium tyres aren't exactly going to be rosy with a few laps to go. It doesn't look as if the rain is going to materialise, to be honest. Speaking of rosy tyres, oh, and on Alters is looking to go down the inside. Oh, please don't. Oh, oh no, Psycho Sane goes slightly wide, they're side by side, their wheels touch, that is epic stuff, they're still side by side, going through Magnus and Beckett's, who's going to come out on top? Orcters just gets the move done, they're ballsy from one Mercedes driver over the other, and now Mayer is brought into play, he is now only 8 tenths behind the battle for these two, it's never ending. But Psycho Sane and Orcters are still there. And it is Orcters who just about keeps it, but Psycho saying, is he going to try something? And there's oh, Mayner out of nowhere! Literally out of nowhere comes the Sauber. I was on board with Psycho saying, sitting on the nose, and suddenly an Alfa Romeo Sauber drops into your DMs like you wouldn't even have known it. Mayner up into eight, Psycho saying, who was once in fifth all the way down to nine, but Mayner picks up a three second time penalty, that's tough. And Lopez gets purple petrol. There's still a battle at the back as well. It's all over. Orchards and Mayner scrapping it out now. That's not done yet. 
Mina, this is fantastic. Where on earth he has come from? We've got yellows in sector three right now. And now Mina is going to go around the outside of Orcus. Can he take both Mercedes in a matter of seconds? He can. Mina Orton out of nowhere. Bullet he's boy. Not no, he's so close to the lead. Sorry to interrupt there, Sam, because this is so close out front. Bullet boy with three laps to go is pressurizing J Ghosts. The clouds have come over the track. Will the clouds come over Jago's possible race win? I think we are on the brink of seeing a little bit of rain spitting. And if it gets slightly heavy on the track, it could play havoc on the last time. Oh, Lopez out of the pits. Oh, he nearly takes Bullet Boy out there going through the first corner. That would have been devastating for them. Bear in mind here that Bullet Boy has got three seconds worth of penalties in his pocket. He's only got three seconds worth. Uh, bullet boy uh, sorry Jago says six seconds worth so he doesn't even really need to make this overtake on track but of course we would love to see it and bullet boy would too he tries to move up the inside Jago's too much momentum around the outside of Brooklyn's but they're going to keep fighting as they go through turns seven and eight and then they run down to cops the track really looks to be calling you can see how dark the track is now there's an obvious racing line forming these are the telltale signs that rain is on its way alters not letting Mayna go since the overtake and neither is psycho so he's still within a second of this battle but the battle up front is now the focus here one and a half tenths separate our two leaguers and we have got a lap and a half to go Renault versus Toro Rosso heading to the penultimate lap. Nearly onto the final lap. Bullet Boy, he's contending for the lead. He's going to try around the outside of Stowe. Jay Ghost doing everything he can to defend the position with all his might. But Bullet Boy, he's proving so quick at the moment. Tries up the inside. But Jay Ghost quick enough around the outside. Incredible action. We told you that Silverstone always provides a close finish. This is no exception. Two temps onto the final lap. Here we go then, it is final lap time, every single corner counts, 1 minute 30 of your life, which is going to be so breathtakingly close, let's see who does it best, Jago's runs slightly wide, but Bullet Boy cuts in early, I think he was trying to get the cut back, but Jago's just didn't play ball there, half a second separate them now, Jago's appears to have done the first sector, slightly better of the two, but that doesn't mean a thing, the lap is not over yet, and we know how quick Bullet Boy has been. Jago's runs a little Ooh. wide and just cuts the nose of Bullet Boy off. No contact, so still looking good. Jago's looking to struggle now. Bullet Boy somehow making those soft tyres work. And into the second half of the lap we go. Bullet Boy has stored up ERS for this moment. He has got so much to use right now. He can just put it on overtake or hot lap until the end. Jago's not quite as much to play with. Of course, we remind you that Bullet Boy has three seconds less of penalties so he should be fine regardless of whether he takes the spot but this is going to be thrilling will a collision ensue between the two drivers bullet boy nearly getting on the grass and jacos using every inch of the circuit in order to defend this position testing the limits of silverstone bullet boy to the oh, outside he wasn't able to get it done last time. Will he be able to get it done this time? No. Jacos holds the position. Will Bullet Boy try one last time into the corner? No. Jacos ahead. And he's going to cross the line first. Unless we get an across the line moment like we did in season two. Not quite. Jacos across the line first. But it's Bullet Boy who wins after starting P13. Great move. Lopez doing donuts on the outside of the track. He's having a great time. Gilzo crosses the line in P3. A booty boy, after a mental midway through the race, is going to come across the line in P4. And somehow, Toxic Tomato, who's got... Mainus Mainus going up the inside oh, of no! Toxic! Oh, and Toxic Tomato is able to defend it. And Main is going to try and make a swoop for the final time. No. And, uh, well, because of penalties, Toxic Tomato is going to drop back a number of positions. Psycho Saint jumps all the way up to 5th, Mega finishes in 6th, a great run from him, all to 7th, Caesar in 8th place, Toxic Tomato 9th, and Carlos comes across the line slowly, he's out of fuel, he's in 10th, Johan is also doing donuts on the outside of the track, you love to see it, it's great to see them celebrating, having a good fun round here, DJ Marshall I think has quite possibly had the toughest race of anyone. Uh, going through this race. It's been so difficult. He's barely been in the points. He drives past the donut in light, crashes into the wall in pure misery. Pearl Electric comes across the line. He's beat DJ Marshall because of penalties. Johannes and Lopez are playing bumper cars on the outside and they cross the line. But there we have it. Silverstone done and dusted. There you have the podium. A Toro Rosso 
a Renault and a Force India. Well done to Gilzo for returning to the podium on his first race back. Jay Ghost in just his second race back has taken uh, P2 and then Bullet Boy ahead of them all in P1. After starting P13, it's the second furthest back anyone has come to take a victory here in the late breaking online racing league. Unbelievable scenes. And there is official confirmation of the result. The Red Bull Toro Rosso Honda and Bullet Boy winning this race. J Ghost in P2, Gilzo in P3. The Booty Boy is a strong race in P4. Psycho saying the only driver not to pick up a penalty in P5. Maynard finishes P6. Orcas finishes P7. Caesar, after an early incident after leading, finishes only P8. P9 goes to Toxic Tomato, an early incident for him as well. Khans then in P10, rounding out the points. Purple Petrol, unlucky. He is the last driver to finish who doesn't get points. DJ Marshall in P12. Johannes in P13. Not quite sure what happened with his second stint. It just didn't work out for him after a long first stint. Lopez then finishes P14. But some beautiful donuts at the end that we might give 20 points to. And Nova Vest, the only retirement from the race. There are 16 points between Caesar and Bullet Boy pending bad maths going into the final two races. We've got Japan next week and then the following week we have Brazil. Until then, I've been Ben Hocking. I've been Samuel Sage. And remember, keep breaking late.